and welcome to another episode of Hard Factor. It is Monday, February 22nd, 2021, episode number 630. Pat is off today. I'm Will. We got Mark and Wes. Boys, how you feeling to start this week? Feeling good? We're clean, right? We got Wes and I got water for the first time in five days today or yesterday. Wow. Today. Austin, Texas moving up. Not I'm all better. of it depleting the shit out of the water supply i'm doing laundry i'm cleaning myself i'm doing dishes <laughs> no you're not west be quiet because uh, half, very half of austin still half of austin still has no water so you're not doing that right well congrats yeah. to you two yeah, on sure. washing your crotches for the first time in a week uh mark uh your mic stand is looking nice by yeah the i'm way. upgrading i got a new macho man poster behind me oh uh and it and a mic stand it's looking really good uh the grease tank Longtime listener, he hit us up on uh, Twitter. He said, "Take it easy on the name Frank, fellas." And to that, <laughs> I say, "Take it easy, Frank." Uh, the grease tank's name is Frank. That's incredible. <laughs> the grease tank, Frank. <laughs> Tahoe hockey didn't go so well during the daylight hours. I'm not sure if you guys saw that. They had to delay to the like middle of the night. No, what happened? The mm. weather wasn't good, or something? No, the weather was too good, and the ice oh, like couldn't melted. handle the beautiful yeah. the beautiful sun on the lake. So. Oh, they should have had it in tonight. Austin. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right? Right? Weird. It's like 70 degrees in Austin today. Well, now it is. Yeah, it's yeah, beautiful yeah, now. Yeah. yeah. And still half the city without power. They're, they might have to do something about that. It's like 10% of the city without power, 50% of the city without water. That's where we're at right now. And the, and the power is you can you can use it as much as you want. But the water you're supposed to conserve because there's still, you know, Austin water can't get the fucking. I got in a fight with Austin water on, and people defending it on Twitter. It's like, look, I don't care about how the physics work. <laughs> Just supply me with water. I pay for it. I live in a fucking city. Get the I, you water. Know, lobby for better infrastructure. I don't know what to tell you. Give me the fucking water. Yeah. yeah. Mark, I don't know if you noticed it, but like driving around the city, you can kind of tell which houses have the had the busted pipes because a lot of people have all their like like damage like couches oh yeah put like it out on the shit. street oh yeah. my god and there's it's, it's like after it's, a hurricane it's a lot more than you than you would think i mean it's, it's crazy whenever yeah. something floods yeah that's, yeah that's how how it goes you, you, yep. get, you get all the stuff a lot of burst pipes i get it yeah yeah okay. lot, speaking of burst <laughs> shit there was that united engine that burst you guys see that video that oh was crazy yeah that's my yeah. worst nightmare people just like watching that thing we're not going to cover the story so just want to that's like donnie that darko yeah it's what? wild yeah it's like like the twilight zone yeah yeah all right all right, well, we got uh, two each, and they're multifaceted, so we're going to cover all kinds of, of stories here on your Monday to get your week going. Let's kick it off with the political lightning round. Uh, get in the hard factor jet, fellas, because we're going to do political updates from all over the country real quick. Whoa. First up, yeah, okay. exactly. We're coast to coast here and this, beyond. This is the Epstein jet? Uh, <laughs> no. Okay. No, that, was, that left the country, didn't it? Yeah, yeah. So I don't know where that is. Yeah, it's, it's banned. We're not yeah. allowed. Hard factor is not allowed to get on the Epstein jet. No. First up in the in the swamp itself, Washington, D.C., we've got world famous Dr. Anthony Fauci telling the American people on CNN State of the Union that he expects mask wearing to potentially continue well into 2022 uh, and that a quote unquote significant degree of normality may be achieved by late 2021 end of the year time of frame kind of thing. So basically from the guy who brought us double and triple masking, he's telling us to brace for a repeat of 2020. You know, uh, Fauci seems like such a nice guy and he's very knowledgeable, but boy, is that guy depressing. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. It's February and he's moving the goalposts for a significant degree of normality to the end of the year. Very end of the year. He needs to lighten up. He needs to lighten up a little bit. Yeah. And masks still next year. So thanks a lot, DC. Just the news we wanted to start this week. Down in Florida, Trump is planning his return to the political stage at CPAC. That's the uh, like political action committee, uh, big gala every year. It's in Orlando next Sunday. Uh, well, it's reported that Mike Pence will not be in attendance as of now. Uh, so who knows? That might change. Maybe I don't know what's going on with Trump and Pence, uh, but we'll, it's hard to see how it's going to shake out for the Republicans in general because a Suffolk University poll recently showed that 46 percent of Republicans would leave the party for Trump. Uh, so really seems to be like a split, you know, sort of everything down the middle the split. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Uh, yeah. Pence is Pence is going to run is what's happening here. Pence is going to run for president. You think it's going to be Pence versus Trump in a showdown for the next the in, next in one? the primary for sure. Yeah. And Haley in the and ring. It, too. And it There's sounds like it's going to be sounds like it's going to be pretty fucking close. <laughs> yeah. I don't know I, if everybody lines up behind Pence potentially. Uh, but Trump's definitely got his base unified. You know that for sure. Mm hmm. 
Uh, next up in New York, Trump's home state or his, his original home state, um, impeachment votes are stacking up for Governor Andrew Cuomo. Tim A on the Discord chat pointed out that up to 30 Democrats, uh, the reps in New York, uh, are in favor of impeachment. Apparently, the list is growing every day. So Cuomo uh, allegedly is under real, real threat of an impeachment. So anyway, yeah. I mean, his, shit's, his shit's weak. Yeah, it should be. Yeah, his yeah. shit's real weak right now. Um, yeah, that's crazy. Could you imagine if both New York and Cali flipped their governors this year? That would just be, well, just be insanity. I think Greg Abbott's probably under a little pressure too after this past week. Texas, <laughs> you're right. Texas, uh, California, New York might be seeing new governors. Yeah, I, I think you're right. Uh, taking it down to Texas, the power uh, and water is basically back on for most people, like you guys are saying. But some people are paying the price with enormous power bills brought to them from companies like gritty uh who are designed to function on the deregulated power grid in texas so uh the screenshot we have for the youtube watchers right now youtube.com slash hard factor news is a fifty seven hundred dollar bill uh for the month of january and i had heard you guys say that some people had gotten what, sixteen thousand. Six- yeah. the highest i saw was sixteen thousand seven hundred something like that some like you know, retired guy in his 60s, ex like army vet or military guy had to deplete like a large portion of his savings. It just like either auto withdrew or whatever, because your option is pay the bill or don't have power. Like that's your, sure. those your options. And, and like something I think some of these power setups, like the way that they're set up is so people can provide energy to the grid, like if they have solar panels or whatever. Right. And then it makes it like a two way street kind of thing. And you're in. Yeah. Well, with the deregulation. Um, you you have like an open market of like hundreds of different providers. Luckily in Austin, I think for Wes and I, most of the people use Austin energy, but yeah. in like Dallas and I guess Houston and other places, they have like these gritties and all these other things you can choose to use them. And then they also have fixed or um, variable pricing. So the fixed pricing is, you know, like you pay uh, what you consume. The variable mm-hmm. I think is like you're in a group pot and it's like, if if there's a lot of power being used in the city, then you pay a lot more. And if the, it's like you it like balances out, it's like a tip pool for waiters. Wow. And some of the people that had their power did not go out in places like Dallas, paid that tip pool and they paid a large fucking portion of it, and the electricity spiked. So in like just a week's worth of energy, they're spending five to ten thousand dollars. Well, Texas may be forced to <gasps> <Yeah>. regulate the <laughs> grid. That wasn't worth it, was it? No, it's time to, <laughs> time to get off for a cot, isn't it? Yeah. But Rick Perry thinks it's not. Yeah. Fucking asshole. Well, uh, we'll see how that plays out. California is going the way of Oregon and proposing to decriminalize psychedelics, which would lead uh, the way to allowing them to be used in therapy in the Golden State, which is very nice. And uh, finally, fellas, bonus politics <laughs> lightning round uh, from down under Mark Zuckerberg, you know, the CEO of Facebook, right? He's in a dust up with the Aussie government over paying content creators for their posts you see uh, specifically news outlets under the new proposal which was introduced in the australian parliament in december news businesses would bargain individually or collectively with facebook and google so they could get paid for their content pretty good idea would be nice for hard factor uh Mm -hmm. google struck struck a deal with the major news outlets facebook did not and shut down news sharing in australia completely so uh, you could not post a single news article to uh, Facebook, uh, Instagram in Australia. Uh, Facebook even deleted some Australian government accounts. Uh, so Australia, the entire country, it's been zucked, mate, completely. Yeah. Uh, oh, no, no, no videos of giant spiders. Mm-hmm. Well, this this makes sense because I saw I saw a news uh, uh, story that, that, that the Australian news is hard on biden at least the one i saw they were they were they were ripping him a new one like how how insane it was that we're not calling out his dementia early onset dementia and like that he's clearly in like not capable of fucking being president so this might have something to do with that 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 they're trying to uh, either know. that or they were making facebook pay for the content which zuckerberg does not like mate aussie pm scott morrison claims that zuck has quote unquote tentatively friended him again uh but uh, and he says that Zuck's back at the negotiating table, but Facebook, they ain't saying nothing about that. So good luck with that, Australia. Uh, but I think that they should support the content creators. What do you guys think? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, please stop zucking. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. fellas, speaking of supporting the boys, support for Hard Factor is now brought to you by 
Manscaped, who is the best in men's below the waist grooming. Manscaped offers precision engineered tools f for your family jewels. They obsess over their technology developments to provide you the best tools for your grooming experience. If you're like me, you've definitely had a couple slips while trimming your balls, right? Uh, that's never a good feeling. And you better hope that that error is not happening at clutch time when you have to break out the goods. You don't want anybody seeing your little razor slip up, you know, when you right. when, when the time is right. So right. What's that? that's why. Hmm? What's that, Wes? You, you, you got some experience? That, no, that's what they, they, they say. What's that? Yeah. And they're like, mm -hmm. gross. <laughs> your balls are bleeding. What's uh, why did you do that? Yes. So that's why Manscaped has redesigned the electric trimmer. The Manscaped engineering team spent 18 months perfecting the greatest ball hair trimmer ever created. Just released it. The new and improved Lawn Mower 3. You mm. see it right here. Uh, the third generation. It. it does. The third generation trimmer features a cutting edge, edge ceramic blade to reduce grooming accidents thanks to advanced skin safe te technology pioneered by Mans Manscaped. It's waterproof, so you can use it in the shower. Its battery lasts up to 90 minutes. Uh, that's a lot of shaves on one battery charge. It even has an LED light, like Wes pointed out, so you don't slip up in the dark. Uh, and if you're listening to me right now, if I want you to get on this experience firsthand because it's changed my life. My balls have never looked better. Trim that junk of yours. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code HARDFACTOR at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use the code HARDFACTOR. Your balls will thank you. And we thank Manscaped for making our winter wieners look so good. They also have they have a bunch of stuff, but they also have this ball deodorant, which is just like this very nice cream that, oh. uh, that was saving me all throughout the um, no power, oh, no water. Because my like balls, a, oh, yeah. it was worth its weight in gold. That's I was amazing. Like, yeah, my balls actually smelled decent. Nothing else did, but yeah, no, Manscaped I was, yeah. legit awesome products. Yeah. Go check them out. Hard if I hadn't, if I hadn't used that thing before this power outage, if I was just like a jungle, things would have been a lot worse for me. And also the nose trimmer they have is. Yeah fucking amazing easiest way to trim your nose okay guys mm -hmm. let me take you on a euro trip first stop france lyon france where the mayor of lyon gregory Doucette, has removed all meat from the schools oh. no meat oh. No meat for the kids. Yeah, no mm. meat for the kids whatsoever. Doucette is a member of the Green Party, and he says, though, the only reason he's doing it is because of COVID, and this is easier to streamline the process for food service and safety. Uh -huh. uh, but others are pushing back, saying, this is crazy. Doucette is a moron. Uh, Agricultural Minister Julien uh, Den Ormendi said, let's stop putting ideology on our children's plates. Let's just give them what they need to grow well. Meat, mm. right? You gotta have meat. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then Interior Minister Ger Gerald Darmanin said, it's unacceptable insult to our French farmers and butchers, no? But what about the butchers? You spit in their faces, and while our kids become puny little wimps. Uh, so Doucette, uh, you know, is just not giving the business to the butchers. He claims, yeah, yeah he right. claims the right-wing uh, mayor that was uh, in office right before him did the same thing uh, because of COVID last year, and it's just just for COVID, chill out. But part of the problem is probably people don't trust him uh, because he's so progressive that he has called the Tour de France bike race macho and polluting. Oh, uh, God. oh wow! Yeah. I don't I don't think talking shit about the Tour de France in France in France is a popular take. This no. guy and Bill Gates are like. Thickest thieves. It's like the Eiffel Tower's dumb too. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> He's talking shit about love. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you can't put the local butchers out of work and talk shit about the tour. You yeah. just can't do it. Uh, so he's he's probably uh, not, not a popular of, guy. Speaking of uh, his buddy Bill Gates, who also wants to get rid of all steaks, did you see that he drank the water from the poop? He drinks yeah. shit water. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What is he doing? I, I don't know. He needs he's, to he's, move in with this guy from France. He's pushing us in a direction that is very dangerous. Um, <laughs> he's, start, he's starting to make the crazy people look not that crazy for right. thinking he's a psycho. Right. Uh, yeah. I don't know what he's doing. Next, we go from not being allowed to eat meat to not being allowed to beat meat. The mm. alternative for Germany, the German nationalist and right-wing populist political party, who sounds like they learned nothing from the two world wars they started, is mm. making a push to ban use for masturbating. Hmm, what? Good luck. 
yeah. the Nazis want to ban masturbation? The new like Nazi-ish party in Germany wants to ban Oh yeah, because they can't be called the Nazis. They would if they what? could yeah. be, right? It <laughs> was, like, the alternative like for party. Germany. Right. Yeah, yeah, cut off the, every every kid's hands. <laughs> yeah. Well, funny you should say that. Uh, there's a, The slogan has something to do with hands. Thomas Dutschter, uh, deputy chairman in, in, in Bavaria for this and prominent member of the <laughs> AFG party, gave this motto uh, recently. Always keep your hands over the duvet. <laughs> <laughs> what? This is ridiculous. So they think that masturbation makes you less manual. It makes yes. you like a little punk. Yes, like yes, just exactly. masturbating all the masturbating little punk. Yes, exactly. Douchebag. I mean, Duster says <laughs> that masturbation has assumed dimensions that far exceed natural needs, and that masturbation. <laughs> <laughs> that masturbation should therefore be ceased in general as it deprives one of creative energy, many nutrients, and male strength. That this makes, guy, makes you less masculine. This guy is the biggest freak. Whoa. He's such a freak. He watches right. so much porn. Yeah. We've heard like, we've heard all the Germany stories during COVID. Like, come on. This guy yeah. is yeah, the lady doth protest too much. Kids would definitely have more time and less dick on their hands to do whatever fucked up activities the alternative for Germany is pushing. It's like Yeah, uh, are they starting like the Hitler youth again? Is that yeah. what the, is that what replaces masturbation? What's think, going on here? I think they do yeah. uh, Okay, now we <laughs> well play everyone admire the white swan. It is so white and beautiful. <laughs> I'm slipping back into French. Yes, <laughs> yes, throws his stones at the black swan, Friedrich. Very good. <laughs> they found out all the French kids aren't eating meat, so now they're trying to build up oh, the other. Yeah. They're, they're going to take over. They're going to bully the French kids. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Non-masturbating Germans uh, are going to have their summer, way with those meatless summer Frenchies. Summer camp, like on the French-German border, is going to be a nightmare for oh, the French kids. A nightmare. Yeah. <laughs> Pent yeah. up aggression with no muscle. Oh. Can you imagine? <laughs> can you imagine like the tra the traveling like soccer teams? They're going to get fucked up. Yeah. Uh, Fuck that party in any group that tells you not to masturbate, though. That's absurd. What is it? 1800? What is right. this? You're like, going to go blind? Yeah. Um, sadly, I couldn't find it, but the, that guy, uh, Duster, uh, mm. apparently has a cartoon on his Facebook page where it shows the development of two men like as they grow up, and it's, a, it's one, one guy who masturbates and one who doesn't, and the guy who masturbates develops a hunchback and gets ugly and stupid, <laughs> nice. and, the guy, and the guy who doesn't ends up looking like Dolph Lundgren with perfect posture. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, a serial killer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good Lord. Oh, that's 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 fucking crazy. Yep. Um, all right. Uh, going to continue with the Euro trip. Ooh, this one comes nice. from Scotland. And the sequence that happened to one man is perhaps top three outside of death was probably in the top three worst things to happen to a person in the world on this day. Um, it took place in Edinburgh Did when inject semen into his arm and then had to no. had to like. No, <laughs> remember that guy? That was a bad yeah, one. That was a Euro, a, that was a Euro that, story. That's a bad one. Yeah, yeah that, maybe that guy should join the AFG. <laughs> yeah, knock it off <laughs> with the semen in the arm. Uh, now this took place in Edinburgh when strangers Jane McKenzie and Bethany Ryan got into an argument on Leith Walk, one of the city's main streets. Apparently, the argument got heated, and James walked towards Bethany with a closed fist. An awful move for a man to do to a woman, but an especially bad move to do to a crazy person. And Bethany, who the newspapers are referring to as a yob, turned out to be the last person you should have done that to. Um, a yob, by the way, means a loutish and uncultured person. Um, let oh. me just pull up a, a picture for you there. There she is in her in her garb. Oh, they blurred yeah. out her face. Uh, you you got to love the short, short skirt yeah. with the fupa just yeah. like on full display. Oh, yeah. She's, she looks like she's a party. Any one man, woman or child that comes at her with the fist raised is going to be in for it. Yep, going to be in for it. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's a, I guess a yob is like a mix between white trash and gypsy, I think. Um, anyway, Bethany responded to James clinch fist by pushing him on his chest and going in for a kiss. But this was no normal kiss. This was the kiss of a yob. And instead of slipping him the tongue, she bit his off. Um, oh, yeah. Approximately two, a two by three centimeter uh, piece right off the tip. Um, and to make matters worse, James, who was bleeding profusely, walked off in a panic and spit out blood along with this large piece of tongue. And then a fucking seagull swooped in <laughs> and ate the piece of tongue as he watched in horror and just flew away with it. Yeah, she won that one. She won yeah. that one big time. She, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. They're like, um, what? They're like the you look, like you, you look yeah. like you made out with a yob. What are you yeah, doing? Exactly. <laughs> the yob wins there, again. There goes your tongue, mate. <laughs> um, so uh, apparently they, they might have been able to um, 
to uh, you know att- reattach this thing, but he spit it out and the seagull took it away. So now he's just left disfigured for the rest of his life. Um, and uh, going to the internet, Dragonfire says we should we should we should call the vermin. There are too many around the town centers nicking my lunch. <laughs> That was Scottish. <laughs> that was like Irish. Yeah, yeah, yeah whatever. Uh, uh, so, yeah, he's, he's more worried about the seagulls. And then Doreen Harrison says, look at the state of her. You can almost see what she had for breakfast. Great, like great, great fat stomach poking out of that tight little skirt. One yeah. big mess. What kind of thoughts go on in her head that she would do something to that, like that to someone? There are far too many people like her around. <laughs> now some, she's of the biggest, some of the biggest losers. <laughs> <laughs> you you started leprechaun and slipped into I think, Indian. I think I'm sticking to Scottish and Engl- uh, 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 Irish pretty close. And then X11 says, "Well, he's useless in the bedroom now." Um, so yeah, uh, that's uh, that's what you. That's, I don't know if he's got a rigid tongue. Maybe it's. I mean, how much of the tongue did he lose? Uh, the, the 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 main. So I think he's just got like the, just the, the front. The important like. the, the the clit flick part is gone. The tip. Is what I'm, is what I'm she thinking. She took out. I a, don't know. She took out a, a like a tooth sized tip of his tongue. Yeah, two by three centimeters. It's, I mean, that's it's. I, I have you guys ever had a tongue injury? I had. I bit through my tongue playing basketball one time, oh. and it is. I still have a scar from it. It is one of the worst injuries you can have. It's you're right. constantly. Like, getting your teeth stuck on the, like the flap and like it's just it's oh. painful as fuck i bit yeah, no. my cheek the other week and i still it, like oh. get, dealing with the flap tongue injuries the are yeah. the worst tons of cheek and then i bit my lip off once then it grew back but uh oh. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. But yeah it, well, that cheek's the worst because when you bite your cheek it's like you're more prone to do it again yeah right yeah, yeah i've been doing that all for like a full week just been biting it over and over again it's been killing oh. me yeah and you can't see my tongue. Uh. <laughs> Showing us a nice. scar. Uh, got a big see tongue that scar? scar. Yeah, yeah. No, see that tongue scar? It's too <laughs> small. Um, <laughs> that's that's a great pick. That's a great pickup line in a bar. Yeah. You, you want to see my scar? scar? Yeah. <laughs> it's got. I, I you got you some just scars. Slip it in her mouth and hope she's not a yob. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Um, but hey, all right, guys and girls, our stereo shows are picking up steam and we are having a lot of fun doing it. And the live interaction we get from you guys is awesome. Fun questions, scenarios. You guys are driving those shows and it makes it a lot of fun for us to do. And we hope for you guys to listen to. So if you have not yet, please go to our pin tweet on Twitter. Use that to sign up for stereo because it helps us out a little if you do that and it's free for you. Then go follow at Hard Factor Mark, Will, Wes and at Pat Cassidy to be notified each and every time we go live which is wednesday and friday until we notify you otherwise around 5 to 6 p.m eastern time perfect to unwind during the drive so you can join in send us a message we will get to it in real time live remember stereo.com slash hard factor mark west will and pat cassidy and use that pin tweet to sign up because it'll help it'll help the boys keep delivering you some oh, free yeah. content and nice. it is it is a lot of fun. We're having a lot of fun. Doing Those shows them. are super fun. And yeah. this this Friday, you'd actually have a chance to go from the stereo happy hour straight into the discord happy hour. If you're both Ooh. following us on stereo. Oh, baby. Nice. On the sin in the car tier. That, that last that Patreon. last hard factor happy hour, the quadruple H, I was like beer bonging IPAs. <laughs> Didn't end well. It's going to go yeah. between stereo yeah. and and discord. It's good. It, Fridays are getting getting exciting in the yeah. hive. Yeah, nice. <laughs> yeah, so check it out. It's a lot of fun. All right, who's up? All who's right, up? it's William. me. I'm up again. And yes. I'm taking it to a story from Cosmic Crusher on Instagram. Sounds sounds like it's going to be good. Yeah. This guy knows a good story when he sees one. Uh, and this one's about the Casa Grande Casa Grande dispatch in Coolidge, Arizona. They reported at about 5:25 p.m. on February 10th that police found a 19-year-old man named Brandon Souls near a water tower with his hands bound behind his back and a bandana stuffed in his mouth. So, random town in Arizona, 19-year-old day. kid. Yep, he's, he's, he's found abandoned by a water tower like he'd been fucked up. Souls mm. told the police that he was kidnapped by two masked men, uh, and he says the men knocked him unconscious then drove him around in a vehicle before leaving him off by the water tower, uh, I guess, presumably to just like suffer. I don't know uh, what what uh, anyhow uh, get away. Yeah, to get away. And he was just left there. So he wouldn't know where they were at. However, mm. the police were unable to verify any security cam footage of the attack, which he claimed happened right in front of his home. So here mm. is uh, Brandon 
um, in his mugshot because uh, he eventually was arrested for this false report. And there's what he, what he fa- did. He faked it. He did this yeah. to himself. Oh, yeah. Look at him. Look at him on the ground, just covered in dust. Yeah, he did that to himself. Uh, yeah. Once the police couldn't find any suspects, um, they arrested Brandon, obviously, for the false reporting, at which point he admitted he faked the kidnapping simply to get out of work that day. <laughs> so- <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> so this kid couldn't get, couldn't make it. In, this, couldn't make it. Effort, boss. The couldn't effort make it to do this is worse than whatever the fuck he's doing at work. Uh, so I, much I would worse. assume he's all dirty. Couldn't so make it in boss. Worse. I got beat up and kidnapped. Yeah. Fucking That's incredible. Amazing. This kid, I mean, he needs to, he's going to find the right career, but unfortunately the tire factory in Coolidge, Arizona found out. So he's facing the charges plus no job now. But mm. like you guys are saying, I mean, that's a lot of work to just get out of one day of work. Like he's going to, he's somehow he'll be able to apply that in a positive way. I got to think. Well, he's creative, but you know what he, he reminds me of? Um, if you're not on Patreon, patreon.com slash hard factor, he reminds me of that seven year old kid from Florida that put himself in a trash can and then mm. almost got he got taken by the trash company and almost got squished and turned into mashed yeah. potatoes. Yeah. Is that guy's name Elias? Elias. Elias. It's like, Elias. He's like a grown-up yeah. version of that. He's like, you know, Elias is going to be doing this when he's 17, 19 to get out of work. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Faking. <laughs> yeah. Dropped off in a fucking, like, dusty yeah. field somewhere. That's awesome. Uh, Cosmic Crush- Crusher also asked a couple questions. Speaking of which, we're going to bring voicemails back on Wednesdays. So voicemails Wednesdays, reviews Fridays. Uh, drop those five star reviews on on iTunes and leave us a voicemail five one two two seven zero fourteen eighty. But Cosmic Crusher also asked a couple questions: Who would win in a Royal Rumble of the hosts? So, uh, who over the I, top over the top rope? Mm. Um, uh, prob- probably Will. Yeah. Well, you just, think just if if it was real wrestling though, we, we, we could team up on them though. We'd have to team know. up on you. I mean, if yeah. it was like no teaming up, just randomly, you're you're like you're you're a wrestler you were an amateur right. wrestler and you're also like just yeah but i feel us. like the three-on-one team up might have well, yeah. me out of the ring first well then yeah. so strategy then, wise which who case, would win? Yeah. yeah so if it's it's me or who's gonna win if i'm out of the ring first me or mark or i and mark or i yeah, yeah you, you or mark you guys, guys would double yeah. up on pat and yeah, then one pat of the two of up. you would screw the other one oh, mm-hmm. okay well that's how that's the answer what roles would we be if hard factor was a cop sitcom hmm so I've thought about it. I think that I here's my setup. I would have me and Mark in the squad car, Pat as like an undercover detective who like is hanging out in a lot of brothels. And yeah. Then Wes, He's always Wes. wearing the costumes and the it, hair things. It, yeah. Yeah. Mm. And then Wes is the chief. Oh, I like Wes as like the the down on his luck disgruntled, always smoking the cigarette down to the detective. Butt. Detective, yeah. <laughs> Wes, that, Wes is that like would be the, me. yeah, that's Wes. Yeah. Wes is like the detective that's seen too much, been through too much, mm. three divorces, you know that type of I'll thing. Throwing yeah. my of, keys on the counter yeah. when I come home. <laughs> One of we gotta have a chief then. Uh, maybe, maybe probably me, be you. Me, me, so I'm the chief. Yeah, Wes, yeah. Wes is, and then Mark's a beat cop. Yeah, I'll Mark, be a beat Mark, cop. That's fine. Mark's telling all <laughs> yeah. the story. Mark's putting people in the drunk tank. Yes, <laughs> that's it. There you go. There it is. Nice. All right. Yeah. Thank you, Cosmic Crusher. Also, uh, go uh, if you guys listen on Spotify, we'll have a question up every show. Remember, you can answer our questions and everyone will be able to see your responses on Spotify, which mm-hmm. is pretty cool yeah. every day. Um, I've got a few doubles today, a few double segments. I think everyone did. Right. And it's, it's fun. Mm-hmm. I love doing doubles and I love segments. Mm-hmm. First up, we had the uh, uh, the uh, Euro trip. And now we have fools that work at schools. Wes. Oh, yes. Oh, oh yes. Well, yes. Wes's indeed. Favorites. First up. Columbia University professor of psychology and neuroscience Carl Hart shared a little too much in his book, Drug Use for Grownups, Chasing Liberty in the Land of Fear. And you guessed it. Oh, he likes to do drugs with that title. He talks about the drugs he does. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. A lot. A lot of drugs. Yeah. Yeah. He does them to help achieve a work-life balance. Guess what his drug of choice is? Get a picture up of uh, marijuana. Mm-hmm. Got to be right. Got him for you. You got him. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, no shrooms, something like that. No, he. Uh, no, it's heroin. He snorts small doses of heroin and suffers withdrawal symptoms of twelve to sixteen hours after his last toot. He says, but uh, the fifty-four. Huh? 
Yeah, but the 54-year-old... He's a heroin addict. He's a heroin addict. So every day, he's snorting heroin. (laughs) Every day. Uh, But the 54-year-old married father and chair of the psych department said it's uh, worth it because heroin is really fucking enjoyable to him. He said, there aren't many things in life that I enjoy more than a few lines by the fireplace (laughs) at the end of the day. Uh, He points out that the experience leaves him refreshed and prepared for it to face another day after that withdrawal so period. This is, so he's just saying, like, he's just for, like, everybody should be able to do all drugs. That's correct. Well, as okay. rational as my alcohol use uh, is, is heroin use, he says, it's like vacation, sex, and the arts. Heroin is one of the tools that I use to maintain my work-life balance. So Carl Hart's just fucking awesome. Probably a horrible poker player that reveals too much. Say less, Carl, but it seems like he's just a fun time. You it's not his job with this? Because that's a crime, right? I mean, he wrote a book. I, I don't know. It's a good question. It's not just heroin. And will he uh obviously not you don't no one just does heroin and then passes on all the other drugs heart also does mdma meth and sy- synthetic bath salts occasionally uh we should probably wow. get this guy on the show right yeah yeah Definitely. he's also the guy he was on that new um uh, netflix documentary about crack and talking about how oh, bad he? how bad crack is yeah same same dude so he doesn't want anybody he doesn't to do, do crack, crack. yeah no, he, he doesn't do does crack but... just mdma bath salts all the other heroin, drugs are on the meth. table Uh, When talking about why he does MDMA, a.k.a. Molly, or essentially ecstasy, he said it gives him intense feelings of pleasure, gratitude, and energy. He's like, it's it's, it's ecstasy, you idiots. That's why I do it. He says, when I'm rolling. Have you ever tried it? Yeah, that's exactly (laughs) what he said. When when I'm rolling, I just want to breathe deeply and enjoy it. Uh, The simple act of breathing can be extremely pleasurable. For the synthetic bath salts, he said, they make him feel unequivocally wonderful, euphoric, energetic, clear-headed, and highly social. Nice, he said. Uh, Damn. Um, yeah. yeah. He, he just sucks. doesn't give a fuck. Why and do it, you think Merlin? Yeah. <laughs> his pops <laughs> pops a Molly pill in yeah. front of him. He's like, what do you, why do you think? Uh, his main goal in talking about all this and writing the books is to push for legalization of all drugs, which he wants Biden to do. Uh, I'm with him on most, but heroin? I don't know. Opiates are pretty crazy and leads to t- t- tens of thousands of deaths a year. And what did you say, Wes? Like 90% of rehab people? It's yeah. just like I, I heroin. Know, I know a few that died already. Exactly. Oof, so maybe maybe not dying. heroin. Maybe pull I, back on the I heroin. I guess what the, the point of, of his approach and what all, all the people that argue for this is like they say, look at uh, what's, the, what's that country? Portugal, right? Where they had a huge heroin problem and they sort of basically decriminalized all drugs and, and it helped to like really alleviate the problem. But, but, I, I get I get that again, but heroin like right now I can't get my hands on heroin. If like Seven Eleven starts selling heroin, one well, day no, I'll I don't try think it. it's like that. I don't think. It, yeah. Oh, okay. No, they don't. They're not gonna. They're not planning to sell it, right? Well, no, he well, says he wants it all legalized. So, it I mean, makes I don't it know. much easier to get. It's so much well, you easier just to be get. able to like go to the store and buy. No, like, a, I don't know. Sell it, but you, I don't you, know. But it just seems like it's easier. They're gonna come in by the if they the fear of not getting caught is going to make it a lot exactly, easier to get. Exactly, Wes. Damn. Hart still seems like a lot of fun to me, though. Wouldn't mind doing an in-person interview with him, if you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Second fools that work at schools uh, story is a weird one. Two New York City educators are suing the school district for $150 million and $40 million, respect- respectfully, for discrimination for being Jewish and for not participating in a Wakanda Forever salute amongst other educators. Well, that was so- real? Yeah, yeah. I, I verified it with like three different sources, uh, like re- um, newspapers and stuff. Karen wow. Ames, shown here. Uh, let me find a picture of Karen. Mm-hmm. She is this woman. She's a th- educator of 30 years, a veteran of 30 years. She claims she was fired for, amongst other things, refusing to do a Wakanda Forever salute and for telling her grandparents' Holocaust story at a meeting. Uh, she claims in court documents that she was told, you better check yourself by a colleague who also said, this is not about being Jewish, it's about black and brown boys of color only. So mm. no Holocaust stories, Ames. Uh, Ames says her career was derailed by New York City School Chancellor Richard Carranza's Disrupt and Dismantle campaign, which was touted as an uh, equity or equality platform um and she alleges it's the exact opposite 150 million though seems a bit high you know for yeah a little bit yeah yeah well you know they they say shoot for the stars land on the moon i think that's what she's doing here yeah i I mean based on her salary i guess that's 149 million for emotional damages if Mm. even including the pension uh the other person suing carranza and the uh new york bronx like uh, group that he runs, like the school district he runs, is here. She seen here. Her name is Rafaela Espinola, Espinal, and she claims she was also fired for refusing to participate in the Wakanda Forever salute uh, at superintendent meetings. Here's she is the one on the far right, not doing mm. in the red, not doing the Wakanda Forever there. Um, but, as, but she as, is doing it now in the red. 
Yeah, she's yeah, like, I guess she's like kind of, she's kind of doing it. Yeah, she's like not doing it well enough, I guess. Oh, come I don't on, know. that's, she's doing it enough. This well, is I don't, insane. Why, I don't, why, I, why do you have to do the Wakanda forever? What well, is I this? don't know if you do. They're claiming you do. I mean, I guess you do. I don't know if you do. Come I, on. I, take her word for it. I guess she's suing for $40 million. She, she so was the, one like year. The New York school system was like, all right, teachers, if you don't the do Bronx, Wakanda yeah. forever, hmm. you're out. Karanza's team. Um, so yeah, I guess she. Uh, that's that's what they're alleging. Yes, uh, she was eligible for lifetime wow. pension uh, a year after, like if she just hadn't been fired one year after that, she would have got a lifetime pension. So she's suing for forty million, a little bit more reasonable, but again, not hmm. like she would. have What made if you just really work. didn't like yeah. the movie? I mean, like what? It, what's, I don't know. Like, well, you know, she, like she what? claims she claims she was admonished for not doing the salute and was told she wasn't black enough because she's like half black. Right, and half she's Latina. black. Yeah, and she she's she was she was told she should just learn to be quiet and look pretty. Uh, and she said oh, that wow. the reason she didn't want to do the Wakanda forever is because she thinks it like takes away from the Black Panther movement, which is a similar salute and more meaningful to her as a, a yeah. A black the pose woman. did seem yeah. silly. Remember, when, like SNL was like doing the it was it was silly. Apparently, Carranza's program has faced similar accusations from other educators as well that aren't suing yet. So Carranza was appointed, by the way, by terrible mayor Bill de Blasio. He's one of his guys. Lots of fools in, in, uh, that worked in schools in that last story, including the lady who thinks she's going to get $150 million. Mm-hmm. Suing for $150 million no. seems, seems like a waste she's of time. She's trying to get a settlement like, like for something yeah. much, much less. That's yeah. a waste of time, though. You know what else is a waste of time, guys? Hmm. Have that- you guys been to the post office lately? That's a pretty oh, that's a pretty big waste it. of time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, at least in Austin, the line is always long. I was there for almost an hour a few weeks ago, only oh. to find out my package wasn't there because it was shipped back because my zip code was used as my street address. I'll never have that hour back or that package back. No, and then <laughs> yeah. try to go during a lunch yeah. hour or something. Forget Whoops. about it. Your Forget day it. is done. Forget it. You don't have to waste time at the post office like I did, though. Instead, you can mail and ship online at Stamps.com. Stamps.com allows you mm. to mail and ship anytime, anywhere, right from your computer. Send letters, ship packages, and pay a lot less with discounted rates from USPS, UPS, and more. Stamps.com has saved businesses thousands of hours and tons of money. With Stamps.com, you get the services of the post office and UPS all in one place, plus big discounts on mailing and shipping rates. We use Stamps.com as a, as a small business owners of Hard Factor LLC, and we love it. It's so mm. easy, so convenient, and saves us money. Simply use your computer to print official U.S. postage 24 hours a day, seven days a week for any letter, any package, any class of mail, any where you want to send once your mail is ready just schedule a pickup or drop off it's that simple with stamps.com you get discounts up to 40 percent of post office rates and up to 62 percent off U- ups shipping rates stamps.com is a no-brainer saving you time and money stop wasting time going to the post office and go to stamps.com instead there's no risk and with our promo code hard factor one word you get a special offer that includes a four-week trial plus free postage and a digital scale no long term Term commitments or contracts that's just a deal go, that is a fucking deal just go to stamps.com click on the microphone at the top of the home page and type in hard factor that's one word hard factor that's stamps.com promo code hard factor stamps.com never go to the post office again Oof. nice why would you uh, i mean when yeah. stamps.com. Shh, don't no get yeah. a discount yeah. um all right guys gonna end it with another little uh, double here a little segment i'm gonna call the clever cartel and it involves uh, ingenious or not so ingenious ways that drug smugglers are using to get drugs into the U.S. First up from intern Cam, a little girl is lucky to be alive in Phoenix today after her parents bought her a little green worm stuffed animal from the El Mirage thrift store in Phoenix. El Mirage, by the way, means the Mirage. Yeah. Um, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, the glow worm, uh, however, was not stuffed with cotton, but rather was something that resembled Oxycontin. Good old fentanyl, 5,000 pills of it. Let me wow. pull up a picture for you. Uh, there's the picture of the worm. And, what is a uh, glow worm, first of all? It's some kind of fucking TV show that kids like, I think. I don't know. That's okay. what it looks like. It's like a Chinese-made little shitty toy. Have they investigated the father yet? No, but but mm-hmm. let me. You're, you're absolutely right, Mark. Yeah. Um, uh-huh. Yeah. 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 Yep. Uh, here's a picture from the Phoenix Police uh, Twitter. Parents purchased glow worm at thrift store El Mirage with their daughter and found sandwich bag with 5,000 pills believed to be fentanyl. Sure. They, called the, they called the Phoenix Police and gave the dangerous drugs to officers. Remember to inspect all used items. Um, and like I said, like I think Will's, or, uh, Mark's on the right track. I think there were 10,000 pills in that worm. 
Um, <laughs> and the parents are in it. Who, who the fuck doesn't squeeze a stuffed animal when you buy it? First thing you do, like like 5, clicking a thousand pills, like feels clicking like a pair of, of tongs. Yeah, yeah, come on. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's exactly like clicking a pair of tongs. You have to you squeeze the stuffed animal before you buy it. They knew there were fucking pills in there. They're taking a little hit and getting some through. Um, yeah, uh, taking it. What to was the, that doing in the thrift shop to begin with, though? Like, well, you got to know. The El Mirage. Going. You got to. Yeah. yeah, it's exactly. The yeah, Mirage is doing some shady yeah. stuff. I once found like a, um, uh, or, or my buddy found a bunch of money in like a uh, a magazine at the counter of a Seven Eleven. He just randomly picked it up, and there was like three hundred bucks in there. So someone was using Ooh, this Seven yeah. Eleven to like you know sell drugs, <laughs> like, exchange drugs. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, this could also just be a marketing ploy for the El Mirage because you know a bunch of people are going to go hit up the El Mirage now. Yeah. Now they're going to try to find some more yeah. drugs. Um, Taken to the internet. Uh, username verified one good guy handle at Lamal California wanted to hop on to shame the less fortunate saying, quote, I would never buy anything at a thrift store. You have no idea what body fluids are in it or on it or give an item to your kid, your own kid. You don't know who touched it. It's nasty. Gross. Okay. Um, so it says, yeah. says a guy, a rich guy, a guy <laughs> who a definitely guy. has never had to yeah. shop at a thrift store. Yeah, who the fuck? A... Who the fuck shames thrift store buyers? Yeah. Some, uh, a real someone, a yeah. real dick. Yeah, real. Hey, dick. everybody who's down on your luck and can only afford thrift right. items. Fuck you. you losers. Yeah. <laughs> you get what you deserve. Yeah. yeah. Get what you pay for. This is a capitalist society. That's right. Uh, anyway, glad the little girl's OK. Could have been a much different scenario had her parents actually bought this to let her play with it. And in our second uh, clever cartel story and one of the most genius ways I have seen to date to smuggle cocaine in the U.S. Almost uh, in Cincinnati, the U.S. Customs and Border Patrol seized 44 pounds of cocaine that was smuggled into the U.S. through cornflakes frosted with cocaine instead of sugar. Um, here's a picture. Yep. Uh, the huh. this shipment was coming from um, the Peru and the drug uh, drug that dog is not real cornflakes. I mean, right. that is not well, even the, the brand the angel brand. Also, these idiots. Why didn't they use frosted flakes? Exactly, Mark. That's what that's where I was going next. They, what that's the what fuck? that's that's why I said almost ingenious because <laughs> these things aren't supposed to be frosted. No, um, <laughs> yeah, that's frosted right. flakes are. Yeah, yes, exactly. Um, so they they were they were covered with uh, uh, like this grayish substance, and then I guess packed with more cocaine inside of them. And the drug dog just sniffed it right out, and they were like, "No, cornflakes are on sale. Right. Look at the cornflakes." <laughs> exactly. Fuck? All they had to do was white cornflakes. All they had to do was pick (laughs) frosted flakes and they were golden. Um, So, yeah. So they were busted. Apparently it was on its way to Hong Kong. I don't know why I was going through Cincinnati or what the deal was, but 44 pounds of cocaine now off the streets. And that's going to do it for hard factor. Um, Hey, stick around after the show for a little sample of that stereo uh, uh, segment that we're talking about. I think you'll like it. Remember, go to patreon.com slash hard factor. Our uh, our Discord thread is on fire. We're just talking. We're making money on there with gambling, with stocks, with uh, with you know all kinds of shit. Some it's, people said our last Florida Man Friday was the the best one yet. Yeah, yeah. Florida Man Fridays yeah, are that's fire, a, and that's that's the extended one, the bonus yep. every week. Yeah, we got three tiers. You can go Florida Man Friday, five bucks. Uh, pop the clutch where you get the, our, our hive hour which is a kind of just a random fun show we do it's kind of loose it's kind of like more of a radio show and and then you get that and the florida man friday and then if you go send in the car you get the discord you get the happy hours um you merch discounts all kinds of shit so yeah please and it, and it of course it helps us keep doing this so help us out uh hardfactor.com check out some merch um mm. and yeah as always have a great fucking day